So hello and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're looking at the Dolphin Point fossils. So the geology of Dolphin Point is a little bit of a complex one. It does include conglomerates, uh, siltstone and sandstone and these fossils are pretty much found within what looks like to be the siltstone, uh, the sandstone grains I might see some sand, or this might be just the wearing down of the actual rock. But to me, it looks like siltstone. And this has lenses of quite a compact fossil formation. So you can see there's lots of fossils in this assemblage, but pretty much there is only a few types of fossils so one of them are bryozoans bryozoans are like a colonial animal uh, they sort of look like coral a lot of people do get them confused with coral but they are a different type of organism and they make fan like structures as you can see there what we're looking at is the lines so these circles are the gaps in between and we have the lines of a colonial uh, bryozoan fossil this one's quite broken and you can see you can't really see any fossils if you put it in uh, a plane that's against the fossil and another thing is I have two types of rocks here they look pretty similar uh, but this one down below is a basalt so this one I did get from basalt formation it's pretty much about five minutes from my house and this is a siltstone so they look pretty similar. Uh, so also don't get confused with that. So I should make another video on uh, the two different types of rock, uh, siltstone and basalt. And other types of fossils we have is spirit for brachiopods. So these ones have a fan structure. So this central part here, you can see it's coming in. That is called the sulcus. And on the other side of the fossil, you would have a part that's elevated and that's opposite of sulcus. That's just called a fold. Uh, I don't really have any of the other side. But I do have another type of brachiopod. I'm not too sure. If, no, that's definitely not. This type of brachiopod so there's two species of brachiopod and I'm not too sure what species that is uh, but anyway with this spear fur this one is the top part of the fossil and they call that a pedicle valve or just the dorsal valve uh, it depends on who you actually read up about these fossils on and you can see there's quite a lot of them. So this one looks a, a bit looks a bit damaged. That one. So this shell here goes over top, and it's been broken. So it looks like you have both sides, but these two sides are most likely two different fossils. So that's uh, very interesting. I haven't seen any trilobites. Oh, I forgot to say the age. So this is a um, 290 million year old fossil formation. It's called the Snapple Point Formation. Uh, but it, it doesn't contain any trilobites. So that's very interesting. It does have crinoids. And that's basically it. As far as I know, there's no graptolites or conodonts. And here's another side of a spear for a brachiopod so this is almost complete about a fifth of it's gone so here is the sulcus so this is a pedicle valve then you have plicatation so that's the actual ribs that you see there and they're very interesting so this is an external mold of the top shell sometimes you can get uh, where is it internal molds so this will be an internal mold of a brachiopod because uh, it does have the branchidium 
So this is the structure in which the bronchioles would have come out of, and that's the feeding apparatus. It's like a, a net that comes out of the actual, uh, so it will come out of the brachiopod and sweep around and try to catch any food. And here's it broken. You can see it's just filled in with sedimentary matrix. And I'm not too sure. It could be a could be a crinoid stem there. So I'm not too sure. I haven't actually seen these up close like I'm looking at now. And you can see this one's probably a sandstone. So different type of matrix. Uh, so we do have a mudstone and here is the sandstone formation and they do occur at the same locality so with these two we have a two sides of the same fossil uh, so it is the probably the bottom this is the top and you can see this is pretty much flat and that's a little bit concave and here we have the internal structure so this if we turn it over that's the internal structure of the actual animal and this is the uh, pedicle opening will be around here somewhere so that's very interesting because this would have been separated in the matrix by a little bit of gap where the shell's been eroded away and here we have an upper brachiopod, so the other species. I'm yet to identify what type of brachiopod that is. And here we have the external mold. So this is the internal mold, external mold. And if we look at the other areas of this fossil, we have a small bryozoans over here. And remove that so I don't damage it. It's another bryozoan. So you can see bryozoans and brachiopods are quite common. And there is uh, more bryozoans and brachiopods. So that's very interesting. So I didn't actually collect these at the place. I purchased them off the internet, I think Facebook, I believe. And uh, you can still get stuff off Facebook. But I can't remember the actual site that I got it off. Uh, or the group. So that's nice. I like that, bryozoans. I especially like this brachiopod. Here's the other side of that uh, bryozoan. If you look on the side, you can probably pick up some fossils that's starting to crack there. And yeah, here's the other side of the rock with some bryozoans and brachiopods. So then there's this one. So if you go to this snapper point formation, you need to actually find the uh, stratigraphy in which it actually occurs because not all the uh, formation does contain fossils. There's a certain section that does. And you can check to see those fossils if, uh, well, just check to see if all the rock has fossils. Can we look at the other side? Yep, all much, pretty much the same. Uh, and there's this one, this is an internal mould and you can tell by the way it is you can see there's like a little bit of a gap between them which has been uh, probably pyrite it's infiltrated and tried to fill the gap so here uh, you have some broken parts of it and is there any other ones that we haven't seen yet? Uh, this one and these ones, so this is quite a large shell, so this is uh, pretty much a midsection. It's been broken, those two go together. But apart from that, there's no other fossils that I can identify in that matrix. Uh, so my, this would have been quite a large shell. Probably something like that big, so bigger than anything I've got here. And no, do these two go together? might sometimes they do sometimes they don't no, i don't think they do no, the angle between both of them is too great so basically that is the fossils 
from uh, uh, Dolphin Point, the Snapple Point formation, which occurs quite over a large area. So here we have a geological map of the area. So here we have Wollongong, but we need to go down south to actually get the information. And you can see this is all part of the Sydney Basin, and you have all different types of rock. So you need to go down past Jervis Bay to Ulladulla and Snapper Point is down here. Um, but where you actually get the fossils are uh, roughly around there. So uh, the fossil formation is up here. Uh, but Snapper Point has the same formation, so that's uh, pretty okay. So you can see here it has siltstone formation. So one dried one den siltstone formation. Uh, and then you've got Pebble Beach, Snapper Point formation, as you can see, makes up most of it. So that is. So I said Snapple Point formation. So uh, these ones are probably the Wendian siltstone. So that pretty much looks like a siltstone to me. So that is uh, what you need to look for. Very fine grain. Uh, and then the Snapple Point formation is siltstone, sandstone conglomerates. And this is not as extensive. Uh, if you go up to this area, you can probably find some or more of the same rock on the coast. So here is a cross section. So we have the Snapple Point formation, which starts up here, and it lenses out into two different uh, lenses. And there's probably another one that's similar to it, and the Marie Sandstone. But in between, you've got the Braxton formation, which is uh, this formation that these rocks did come out of. Uh, so disregard. If you can find this snapper point formation, you should be able to find that one as well. And as you can see, it lenses out into the formation. So this probably formed over time. Uh, Siltstones formed in pretty uh, calm environments. Sandstones more coastal, so it has a lot more energy. And you've got coal measures, which definitely is the coast because the coals are made out of plants. Conglomerates is high energy environment, so you've got different types of energies that occur in the depositional uh, formations. And he here we have a, another cross section, so this is an interpretation. And this is the formation we want. So this is the latest, 96, uh, the earliest. Uh, so this one's been a continuous formation, part of the Shoal Haven group. And the snapper point is below it. So this one is an earlier version or later version in uh, the snapper point. So there is an age difference in the both uh, pretty much late early Permian. So that would make it pretty much mid Permian uh, 290 million years ago. So here's a better cross section. So this is going down so pretty much the top of the section should be up there and then you're going down and we can see the window oh, I can't even say it yeah we'll just say it is called the Broughton formation and you can see it has different structures within the formation so we have our pebbles so there are pebbles there uh, if we go down we have uh, conglomerates down the bottom which are just above siltstone mudstone and here we have siltstone and mudstone and in between we have massive slump beds so they're probably turbotides where uh, materials come off a how do it turbotides uh, okay so You've got a coastal scene, so this is like the beach area. And this is the deep sea. So when you've got material from up here that goes down here, they're called turbotides. 
So, and then they pretty much kill everything that's been deposited there because you just got a lot of material coming down. So that's probably what that could be, massive slump bed. And in that we have, doesn't say what those are, they're probably pebbles up the top, unconformity, so this has been eroded. Uh, and this is question marks that are not too sure uh, the what the if it's uh, a conformity or an unconformity between the snapper point formation and the Wandra Wendian siltstone. So it's offshore marine, uh, new near shore marine. So it's probably deep, deeper sea, a lot deeper. And then you've got offshore marine. And you got, see the snapper point gets pretty complex. And then here it gets more complex. So if we have a look at the map, we've got snapper point, Mary Beach. And if we go to Google Maps, uh, it pretty much looks like uh, the dolphin point. So dolphin point is this part here. So snapper point is probably this area here. So pretty much a geology would be pretty similar. And uh, yeah, so here is Bula Dula. So the fossils probably could have come from that headland or even around here. Uh, it's hard to say because I didn't actually collect the fossils myself. Okay, I did find it. So snapper points here. And if we go up, uh, we have dolphin point up here. So there are two different locations. Uh, the other map was a bit confusing. Anyway, in the next video, we're just going to go through the actual geology of the area. So thank you very much and join me next time.